Well, I've just got the cows out of the barn after the evening milking. I'm getting ready to make some nettle soup. I've got a group of people coming tomorrow. We're going to cut some hay using scythes. We're pretty excited about it. I told them I'd make them some lunch. So I thought I'd get started on the soup tonight and maybe do some sort of a vegetable tart tomorrow. Kind of nice and simple, pretty good. I gotta get started now though because I'm gonna be exhausted. I gotta get up and milk in the morning and that's kind of life on the farm. Early to rise and early in the sack. Thank God I'm a country girl. Well, a simple kind of life never did me no harm. Raising me a family, working on the farm. Days are all filled with an easy country charm. Thank God I'm a country girl. A couple of years ago, I moved up to Wisconsin. I started an organic dairy farm at St. Isidore's Mead. That's when I discovered the abundance of Midwestern local food and small-scale farmers. They're growing everything from green zebra tomatoes to pasture pork. I'm taking a break from the cows, hitting the road, and seeing if I can't satisfy my epicurious appetite. Luckily, I have ample amounts of nettle growing on my farm everywhere. This time of the year, it's a tiny bit late for like, you know, the really great spring nettles, but I still, I can make nettle soup every single day and eat it. I would never get sick of it. So I'm going to make it with the mature nettles. I need some rubber gloves because obviously if you grab nettles without rubber gloves, you're going to get stung and it's going to hurt. But if you do and you have, say, some cow manure handy or some mud, Put that on your sting and it'll take the sting out. I don't know why it works. It must be the moisture or something, but I've done it a million times and it really does work. So I've got my gloves on almost here. For the soup, I like to use about a basket full. That translates into about a half of a grocery bag, like a paper grocery bag's worth. And when we're picking nettles, we only want the top parts of the nettle. This is the only part that we want. The rest of it gets a little bit too hairy. It gets some some funny textures to it. So I'm gonna grab the top parts. This is kind of a fun thing to do. It's kind of a really wonderful thing to cook because I get to come out to the farm, wander around and grab my ingredients. It's great because I don't have to go to the grocery store and I always have it to make here. What a wonderful thing to eat. Really, it's good for you too. It's got tons and tons of iron. I think it's full of vitamin C. What I've heard is it's like a great blood purifier. That's why they come out in the spring, along with like your dandelions and stuff. I don't know if it's true, but I like to believe it's true. So by eating the dandelion greens, by eating those nettles, you're purifying that body from being, you know, all cooped up in the winter time and things like that. Isn't that kind of romantic and wonderful to believe? I'm, I'm hooked. I'm hooked on it. I'm hooked on nettles. Jumbo like crawfish pie, fill it gumbo. For tonight I'm gonna see Mama share me go. Picky tar, fill fruit jar, and the gale. Son of a gun, we're gonna have big fun on the bayou. On the way in from getting the nettles, I found that we still had a few sprigs of asparagus left. I thought it'd be a sin if we left them out there, so I grabbed them. And I decided we'd throw them in with our soup. So we're making a nettle asparagus soup now. I've got uh, one diced onion in the pot with two diced uh, potatoes. We're just going to cook those down. A basic sort of soup base. Throw some garlic in. I'm getting ready to put some salt and pepper in. Next, I'm just going to add my asparagus. I'm going to add the nettles. So to the pot, I've added my six cups of broth my salt and pepper to taste, and a little bit of nutmeg, maybe half a tablespoon of nutmeg. Also, I've added the nettles. I'm gonna add a few bit more. They boil down a little bit as you add them, so you wanna kind of add a little bit more when you can. The more nettles, the better. That's what gives it a really nice sort of, almost citrusy flavor, I think. Now what we do is we boil everything together. So we need to make everything soft because our next step is we're gonna puree it. So we want everything as soft as it can be, and then we puree it. And then basically it's done. It's a very easy soup. We've got the team of uh, scythers outside getting ready to put down some hay and I'm getting ready to make them lunch. I decided today I was going to do uh, some sort of a vegetable tart. I've got some Swiss chard in the garden. I had a bunch of eggs this morning from the chickens. I have some fresh milk. 
So I'm going to do a Swiss chard and caramelized onion tart. We have the nettle soup that I made last night, and I'm also going to make switchel, which is sort of the official Scyther's drink. So we're starting with the dough. It's a really simple dough, just two cups of flour, a half a pound of butter, really cold, and cold ice water. You can buy store-bought crust, but don't, because this crust is so easy to make, and I just it's so much better than store-bought crust. I don't get the whole deal with store-bought crust, because it's kind of gross. So make it up in advance. I always make you know four or five recipes of dough in advance, uh, wrap it up, put it in the freezer, and then I can just pull it out when I need a meal, and bam, I've got the dough ready. You want to use the best quality butter you have. Best quality ingredients, period. That's what's going to make good food. It doesn't matter, you know, what your skill level of cooking or baking. Just use the best ingredients. Use the freshest things. If you've got eggs on your farm, use the eggs. If you don't, find a farmer. They're just, the yolks are amazing. The color is so much different. The flavor is different. It makes for a better experience. So spend a little bit of extra money and get the, the better product. Better yet, find a farmer and get some milk, make your own. I think that's the best way to do it. That's what makes good food. So you just want to place it in a tart pan. I like to use tart pans with a removable bottom. It just makes it kind of nicer to serve. Uh, if you don't have one, use the other kind. I use the other kind too. I like those too. It kind of just depends on what you have. But get it nice and tight in here. Pop it back in the fridge. Let it chill for about another half an hour. That kind of helps the dough set up. It makes it nice and flaky. So I'm just going to pop it right back in the fridge. We're going to start off by caramelizing one onion. I think we'll just do one today. It depends on your taste and how many onions you have around. I like to caramelize mine. I'm going to do like a quick caramelization. So, you know, it doesn't have to take you half of your life to do it like some people like to do. I'm just going to do it fast. I'm going to slice kind of, you know, a kind of thicker. And that's the onion. Put your onion skins in the compost pile or feed them to your, if you have meat chickens, don't feed them to your layer chickens because it, the taste of the onion will come through in the eggs and that's not gonna be really appetizing for you. In my pan, I'm gonna do a mixture of olive oil and butter. It just kind of adds a nice flavor and it, it kind of browns it up a little bit. So about a tablespoon of olive oil, about the same of butter. Get that going. And that'll just make it start looking nice. I got it going over medium heat. And when I say quick caramelization, I mean, you know, you can leave these onions sit in here cooking slowly for an hour to really kind of get that nice caramel color, flavor, texture. If you're making an onion soup, that's what you want to do. For this, you don't need to do it because the onions are really not the star of the show because they're being mixed with the eggs and the Swiss chard and everything else. Okay. So the onions are caramelized. I'm gonna put these to the side because I'm gonna use the same pan for cooking the Swiss chard. That way, less dishes and kind of picks up that rest of that flavor. I'll turn my pan back on to medium heat. I got my Swiss chard. When you cook Swiss chard, you don't want to dry it after you wash it. If you cook it when it's a little bit wet, it kind of helps steam it a little bit and it cooks better. So don't dry it. Swiss chard also freezes really well. So if you want to, if you've got a, you know, a glutton of Swiss chard in your garden, as I know a lot of people do, dice it up, uh, saute it up with the onion, put your spices in, salt and pepper or whatever, red pepper flakes, <laughs> Throw it in a freezer bag and throw it in the freezer. It's a, and then you can just pop it out in the middle of winter and you have fresh Swiss chard. This is a lot of Swiss chard. I probably did a little bit much, but it's okay. No big deal. Look at that. I love the colors. This is a rainbow Swiss chard. That's why it's got all those different colors. A little bit of olive oil in the pan again, just so it doesn't stick. And then pop in your Swiss chard. The milk truck's here. Super. So we have the Swiss chard cooking down. It's starting to smell really great, like those fresh greens, really healthy. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper to this, just to kind of season it a little bit. And I like adding my salt from a salt container like this. It makes me feel like I'm in Italy or something cooking, which is always kind of nice. And 
I never use too much. And always a pepper grinder because it just is better. I love it. Little bit of red pepper flakes just to give it a little heat. Look at how that's cooking down. It's just such a beautiful green. Look at that green color. It really holds up well. So this is done. We're gonna add this with the onions into a nice large bowl. Get this out of my way. When I'm cooking, I always like to have sort of a clean space. Just, it makes it nicer. I'm gonna let that cool down in that bowl. Now, I used to use a ton of eggs when I was cooking. I've since realized that three is all you need. I was in Florida over the winter time uh, at my friends and she was saying three eggs is really all you need. So it makes it nicer, a little bit lighter, less eggy. Look at the color of these yolks. These are just, I just grabbed these out of the chicken coop this morning. Nice pasture raised eggs. I guess on the blue it doesn't look as nice, but they're really just nice healthy eggs. Lots of omega-3s. They're foraging all summer for extra foods and from the garden, which is kind of nice. A little bit of cream. Well, this is actually whole milk, but it's right off of the farm and it's we have Jersey cows, so they have a little bit creamier milk. So I can just use a little bit of the whole milk that I have on the farm instead of buying cream. I'm gonna whisk that up lightly just to break it up. See, I'm not over beating it. I'm gonna add that right to the vegetables. Mixy, mixy. At this point, you could add a little bit of cheese to the filling. I like to put it on top as well. Yum, yum. Really easy, really healthy. I'm gonna put that in my crust now. So there's the crust that we have, nice and chilled. That way it holds up better. Simple, simple. Look at that, so pretty. Spread it nice and around so everybody, you know, gets an equal bit of Swiss chard and onion and things like that. Top it with the cheese because cheese makes everything better. I'm using a Parmesan. You could use a cheddar, a goat cheese, mozzarella, kind of anything you have on hand works really well. Let me get these out of the way. My mom went to upstate New York this winter and brought back the idea of putting ground pistachios on everything that we make now, which is kind of a nice little addition. Gives it a little bit of a crunch, a little bit of a nice color, and makes it fun. So, got my mortar and pestle and I'm grinding the pistachios. Grind, grind, grind. I love doing this work too. It just makes me feel like I'm in a whole nother era. Just sort of these basic cooking skills and grinding and really hands-on with the food. I love it. We're ground. and just sprinkle right over the top. See, it just it kind of makes it more interesting. It's a, you know, these are simple foods, so it's nice to kind of make them a little bit more interesting with something else, but they're still so elegant. Pop it in the oven at 425, 25 minutes to a half an hour, something like that, depending. And you've got your tart. There you go. We can't have people out making hay without giving them some Switchel. It's actually the official Switchel drink, also known as the Haymaker's Punch. It's apple cider vinegar, honey, molasses, ginger, really healthy stuff, kind of the original Gatorade. People used to drink this way back when uh, because they didn't have fruit drinks, because it was too expensive to bring in lemons and limes to make any sort of fruit drinks. They couldn't drink the water, but they always had vinegar from you know making wine or whatever. If the wine went bad, they had vinegar. They could buy it cheap, so they started making switchel. What we do is we start with apple cider vinegar, and it's kind of, you know, you kind of have to go taste testy and just figure out what you like best. I use about a cup of apple cider vinegar, <laughs> excuse me, to a half a cup of honey and a half a cup of 
molasses. When I'm measuring out the honey too, this is really fun. I learned this somewhere. Put a little bit of cooking spray in your measuring cup. That way you don't have to wait, you know, for the next 15 years before the honey actually comes out. So, you know, I'm gonna do a cup of honey. I think that'll be nice. Oh, almost a cup, how about that? And this is local honey. If you always look for local honey, it's so good for you. It's, you know, the, the bees are out there, they're gathering all the pollen and stuff like that. So it'll help you with your allergies. It's just good to do. A lot of the honey that you'll buy in the store nowadays, if it's not local, it's got corn syrup in it. So it's like, what's the point? You know, you might as well just be buying corn syrup. Look for local honey. This honey has a sticker on it. It's something special from Wisconsin. All these products that have this label on it, you know they're from Wisconsin. You have to go through a certain certification to get this sticker on. So look for the sticker when you're at the grocery store or ask for it too. There's the honey. Let's do some molasses. Look at that molasses. I'm going to do a little bit less molasses. Wow, is that pretty? Oops. Very old drink. It's really rehydrating for you too. I think it must be the apple cider vinegar or something. We're going to put some water in it too, but it must be the apple cider vinegar that just sort of helps your body rehydrate after being out in the sunshine. Ginger, this is very important. This is a great way to peel ginger right here. I have a spoon and I'm just simply peeling the ginger. Leaves you a lot more ginger than if you were gonna do it with a knife or something. So just take the skin off the ginger. Have a nice little one of these and grate ginger in. I like to use a little, I like to use a lot of ginger because I think it's, it tastes great, it smells good. Not bad for you, that's for sure. I'm just gonna grate it all in here, get all the gingery goodness. If your muscles hurt, you can take a bath in ginger and it kind of helps relieve that pain on your muscles. You just grate it on up and throw it in the bathtub. Make sure you kind of have something to catch it with though, or else it's gonna get all down the drain. But that's okay too. So we've got nice ginger in there. Get your hands in there and kind of scrape it all up. I'm gonna add a little bit of water Oops, try to get some in the jug. Wow, that's starting to look good. These guys are gonna really appreciate it on a hot day like today. Get that nice and stirred up. Boy, you know, molasses, what a great thing. What a great color. We don't cook with molasses enough. I usually only use it during you know, the holidays for doing cookies or something like that, but what a great way to use molasses. It's nice and stirred up. I'm just gonna add a little bit of ice to the glasses and now we have our old fashioned haymakers punch switchel. We picked some fresh nettles last mm -hmm. night. Put a little bit That's of asparagus good. in it from the garden. So it's yeah, a it's a nettle soup. That's that one there. Oh, this is so good. Okay. Mm. This is a great spring soup. I know Lori does a lot with nettles too. Mm -hmm. I like to make tea. Pesto. Yeah, no, no kidding. Pesto? pesto? Oh. How do you get the stinger out with the pesto? Is well, it if you, if you grind it, it masters. Okay. Kevin, I'm gonna get you a piece right away here. That sounds like my dog. That sounds like my dog when you're chewing your leg. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks yeah. for coming Kevin. down from Superior, Kevin. Yeah, nice. from our most distant traveler. 